Hey everyone, it's Siggy here. For this video, I will be drawing an object plus robot combination. I'll go over my whole creative process, which focuses on three main points. The concept, the silhouette, and the mobility. Hopefully this inspires you to make a cool robot character and draw with me. Stay till the end for my best tip on making great robot designs. Before I even begin, I figure out a concept to go with. What do they like? Do they have a specific purpose? Do they have their own personality or are they more of a machine? Ask yourself questions along those lines. For my design here, I wanted my robot to be playful, and I embodied that by giving him a cutesy face and using my gold PS4 controller as a base. To quickly talk about silhouette here, the PS4 controller has nice unique shapes that would make for a great one. Also, controllers are used to play video games, so it adds to my robot's playful nature. I'll reiterate some tips from the mech video, specifically about mobility since it's very important for a robot design. I do a trick here with the transform tool, where I move the pivot, the cross, onto the elbow area. That way, the rotation center is on the elbow and I'm able to see if the arms collide with anything. I also add a line on the upper arm to give my robot a swivel, letting him rotate his arms 360 on that area. Robots can replicate human mobility, but without any limitations, so try to decide how you want it to move in the sketching phase. I try bow-legged design but end up sticking with the stubby legs, and add the cream bottom which is present in the gold PS4 controller. Here I do analog stick joints, which add to the theme, while still functioning well for the joints. Formless function. Notice my heavy emphasis on sketching. It's better to have more options to compare and contrast to explore ideas. Take as much time as you need here, because if it works as a sketch, it will work fully rendered. I add a space here so the legs are free to swivel around 360 degrees. I add the same joint as the elbow because, why not, it's the same motion. I try out different feet shapes that come to mind, though I didn't go with it, I'm glad I tried to see if it would work. Now I know for sure that the original stubby legs would work better. Next, I add the base colors to my sketch inspired by the PS4 controller I have. I'm adding in the colors to see the overall look, but this is still part of the sketching phase. I'm happy with the colors now, so I could continue on to the final version. You can help support us to make free arts education. Become a member on Patreon or YouTube and get special perks like critiques and classes. We time skip a little bit here because uh, I forgot to hit record. But don't worry, didn't miss anything important. For my final artwork, I'd like to start with the hard shapes to color in. I use different layers to make easy for myself to work with the parts and to help with the depth. For example, the arm on our left is behind the body because of the slight perspective. So I color this arm in a layer below the body. Use as many layers as you'd like, as long as it helps you organize your process. Be aware that putting layers in folders can affect how they act, so check out this video for more. Smooth sailing from here because we spent all that time planning and sketching. All I do here is follow my sketch and clean up the design. All the thinking and planning has been done, and I can now head empty and fill base coats. I like to call this phase the victory lap. Here I use the lasso tool to cleanly separate the legs. Now I know for sure these leg plates can fit snug and move around. I add thickness to the plating here to describe the metal. You could do this on a separate layer if you'd like, but I did it on one. I decide on which layers to merge based on function, asking myself, will I make major changes to this part anytime soon? If not, I usually merge it to one. Spoilers, but I merge this all to one layer later. But if I were to work on this more, I would probably have each limb and the torso on separate layers so it's easier to add stuff like shadows. There's no right or wrong number of layers. Decide based on what will work for you. Data brokers are making a fortune selling your information to robocallers, spammers, and others who want to learn more about you. That's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, Aura. Aura can identify data brokers exposing your info and submit opt-out requests on your behalf. Brokers are legally required to remove your info if you ask them to, but they make it super hard to do. Aura also does so much to protect you and your family from online threats you can't see. It's really easy to set up, so you don't have to download several different apps to get things like parental controls, antivirus, VPN, password management, identity theft insurance, and more. You get everything at one affordable price. You can try Aura free for two weeks using my special link, aura.com slash wingcanvas. Here I start rendering the metal. The shadows represent the reflections. The technique to shading metal is following the shape. The arms and legs have a cylindrical shape, so I will draw the shadows as lines falling the cylinder down. I want to add that this can all be done traditionally or through different digital methods. Students often think that you need to follow a step-by-step -step to replicate a technique like metal rendering, when it would be more efficient to learn the properties yourself. For example, 
It's better to learn that a metal has high contrast, meaning that shadows are super dark and highlights are super bright, instead of trying to memorize the steps I take here. In short, focus more on drawing what you observe and doing research on stuff like metal shading, instead of focusing on the tools that I used. This allows more creativity from you, and it's way more fun than keeping track of specific steps I take here. For finishing touches, I add edge lights. Edges tend to catch a lot of light, so I love adding that, especially on metal. So I've decided to name him Goldie, the PS4 controller robot. I stayed on track thanks to my concept, a controller robot with a cutesy, playful personality. Then, I described that concept with silhouettes, mainly keeping the overall shape of the controller, and adding elements to add to the theme like analog joints and buttons on the robot's sides. I also checked if the design was functional by keeping the joints and mobility in mind. As long as you have those guiding points while you're designing, you will reach a well thought out and unique final design. If you've made it this far, as promised, here's my best tip for designing any character. Spend the most amount of time in sketching and planning. The three points I had put out for myself all have to be decided very early on. It doesn't necessarily have to be concept, mobility, and silhouette specifically, but decide on what you yourself think would be important. These three things helped me decide on the physical appearance of my robot and the personality it would have. So before you even draw, decide what you want to see in your robot, and the rest will be built up from there. Join a virtual art class to learn live from our professional artists, get creative assignments, individual guidance, and real-time feedback on your artwork. Start today and level up your practice. If you learned something new, please like and share this video with a fellow art nerd. If you love receiving quality and free arts education, subscribe! Here's a couple other videos you could check out next.